Every year it's the same old story. Chased, jostled and shoved. What a bird has to put up with for a nice spot on the beach. These king penguins and elephant seals have all come looking for mates. And more. This is a summer's tale of a wild beach party at the edge of the world. The annual gathering happens in an exclusive spot, accessible only to a few privileged species. Just within the southernmost confines of the Indian Ocean lies a group of islands. Crozet, Marion, Kerguelen and Amsterdam, these islands offer a summer sanctuary for breeding. Here, animals seek refuge on the only unfrozen land in the sub-Antarctic. Ice-free beaches provide a luxurious getaway in this part of the world. Once volcanoes, these rocky, seemingly inhospitable islands make a popular summer destination for millions of travelers. And the animals which come here must pack in finding a mate having sex, giving birth, and raising their young, all within one summer. King penguins and elephant seals crowd the beach and the mouths of nearby rivers. Even here, accessible waterfront property is the choice real estate. Although forced to share the same beaches every summer, these two species don't make the best neighbors. The moment they hit the sand, these king penguins try to scare off a stray young elephant seal. In a matter of days, empty beaches become teeming territory battlegrounds. And even the young are not shy of using intimidation to get what they want. They may appear a bit awkward on land, but king penguins can handle all sorts of terrain. Excellent swimmers, their feet and tail serve as a rudder while their flippers propel them at astonishing speeds. They dive to feed on krill, fish and squid. King penguins arrive for the summer in small groups that have lived together in the open sea for the past eight months. Instinctively, each bird returns to the island where it was born to breed. Unfortunately, this inbreeding among the same population year after year limits the gene pool, creating a lack of genetic diversity. This homogeneity could make these king penguins vulnerable to being wiped out by disease or environmental changes. This group heads for the big annual gathering. King penguins meet, mate and breed on gently sloping land with plenty of nearby tussock grass for sheltering their eggs. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of penguins mill around calling out for their mates. King penguins stay monogamous throughout a season, but unlike some other penguin species, less than a third of these birds keep the same partner for life.
This elephant seal has wandered into the middle of the wrong party, presenting a serious danger to the penguins. Simply by moving through the crowd, he can demolish a small colony. He heads for his own group with remarkable speed. The arrival of this very pregnant female attracts the attention of at least one male on the beach. Elephant seals mate at the end of the summer season and have a gestation period that lasts all winter long. A bull's brief but effective charge corrals the cow into joining his harem. The large males arrived weeks earlier to fight out a dominance hierarchy and to stake out territory in hopes of attracting females. The master of a harem, called a beach master, works day and night to hold on to his females. Lone, younger bulls wander the beaches looking to usurp older, worn-out bulls. these energetic little seals are having a much better time. Like the others, sub-Antarctic fur seals make a summer pilgrimage to these islands to mate and to rear their young. There's also some great surfing. Like elephant seals, fur seals bear their pups at the beginning of the summer. Nursing mothers shelter their pups in rock crevices while they fish. Pups are coated in black, woolly fur that lasts throughout the summer. Surprisingly agile on land, fur seals can walk and even run over steep and slippery surfaces. This difficult terrain is completely inaccessible to either elephant seals or penguins. Meanwhile, on flat land, the king penguins have found their mates. Once a penguin couple has formed, the two will remain together throughout the summer season. Mates bond by creating and practicing the vocal call that will allow them to find each other again in the midst of next summer's colony. Every couple has a unique song, and at each meeting, the birds exchange their vocal identity as a greeting. Mating rituals bond the pair for future shared responsibilities. 
Both adults will contribute to tasks of incubating eggs and raising chicks. A perfect union, perhaps, but not for long if these troublesome onlookers have their way. Meddlers attempt to break up the already formed couple by intruding on mating ceremonies. The penguin, however, is a strict monogamist. Once it has made its choice, it remains focused exclusively on its mating partner. Meanwhile, beachmasters keep fighting off the competition. The victors round up their harems. Bulls use their extraordinary noses to frighten off enemies. They puff up their inflatable nose bags for a truly ferocious look. All this attacking and defending is for high stakes. Each summer, only the largest and fiercest 3% of males succeed in reproducing. But the few who do hit the jackpot. Some acquire harems with over a hundred cows. The young male backs off and the beachmaster wins again. His power for now retained. Back at the penguin colony, couples have less than a square meter to themselves. They spend their days squabbling and bickering, trying to hold their ground. With all the commotion in the colony, a fragile penguin egg could crack open at any moment. The parents, aware of their egg's vulnerability, aggressively warn others away. There is no nest. The egg rests precariously on the feet of a parent. A panic in the colony could transform this year's offspring into a giant omelette. Cloaked in brown down, new chicks have hatched, ballooning the nesting colony by 50%. The chicks huddle together in nurseries for warmth and protection from predators. The population explosion attracts flocks of parasitic birds. The islands now abound with culinary opportunities for these scavengers. The lesser sheath bills roam around the penguins' feet looking for feathers, droppings and other delectable little scraps. Even momentarily abandoned eggs.
Meanwhile, down on the beach, the elephant seals appear languid. But not at all. Within 10 days of arriving, the cow gives birth. It's a strangely dry beginning for a marine mammal that will spend 90% of its life underwater. This baby won't leave its mother's protective flank for several weeks. A skewer takes more than a passing interest in the new arrival. Watching carefully, these birds eagerly await more births in the harem. A feast is on its way. Hundreds of pups will be born during the early summer. Placentas, amniotic sacs and umbilical cords abound for those who enjoy these choice morsels, rich in protein. A skewer makes the most of milken rivers of plenty. Watchful eyes survey every square meter of the colony. A third scavenger species, the giant petrel, depends on carrion from seal colonies for its survival. Strong and quarrelsome, this big bird dominates the other scavengers. Ever on the alert, these pirates quickly invade, ready to tear each other apart for the placenta booty. quickly have their fill. While the rest squabble over the remaining scraps. Nothing goes unnoticed. Even a beachmaster's bleeding gash makes a gory snack for these opportunists. While the females give birth, the males continue to fight, suffering more wounds and mutilated limbs.
Dutch master pays a high price for the chance to perpetuate his genes. His is not a job for life. If he's strong enough and lucky enough, he'll get two summers before a younger bull ousts him. This former beachmaster has been badly wounded in the coup. A piece of his snout is lost to the waves and to a hungry skewer. Injury and exhaustion bring the old bull's seafaring days to an end. Such is nature's way. One animal's misfortune is another's good luck. A prize like this means competition. Rivalry is fierce not only between species, but also among species. Giant petrels are particularly brutal. In spite of their constant quarrelling, as many as a hundred scavengers may share this carcass. A four-ton elephant seal. A few days, and all that's left are a few well-picked bones. Far from the fracas on the beach, a lone, wandering albatross glides in to meet his mate. Providing the couple rear a chick successfully, the elaborate albatross mating ritual generally happens only once every two years. So, after a long absence, partners greet each other with a precise series of signs and sounds. Although they're solitary wanderers, they mate for life and a long life it is. Some albatross live for an extraordinary 80 years. is barely interrupted by the surprise presence of an elephant seal. Like the other species on the island, the albatross come ashore to reproduce. A welcome pause, perhaps, for these birds who spend so much time on the wing. Here they nest in the tranquility of the mountainous island interior, where they make their home amidst green fields and peat bogs.
Albatross construct their nests by building little raised mounds to protect their chicks from the damp, marshy ground. Remarkably, they return to nest within three feet of the same spot year after year for life. Like the king penguin, albatross have one chick at a time. It takes an albatross couple over a year to raise their offspring. A born glider, the albatross must have wind to take off. Without it, the birds are grounded, unable to fish. Down on the beach, insatiable appetites govern daily life in the colony. There's nothing on the island that penguins can feed their young. So all day, the parents waddle on their little legs back and forth to the ocean for fishing, to their chicks for feeding, and then back again to the ocean. Male and female penguins share fishing duties. They have exceptional diving capacities. Holding their breath for 10 minutes, they can plunge to depths of 300 meters, catching delicacies too deep for other birds. Topside, the albatross's gliding abilities give it a fishing edge. Capable of traveling enormous distances with little effort, an albatross can roam 10,000 kilometers in 20 days to find the best fishing spots. seas here teem with food. Cold Antarctic waters meet with the warmer Indian Ocean, supporting vast concentrations of microscopic plant life. This feeds zooplankton, like krill. Shrimp-sized krill are a staple of the king penguin diet. These squid live in the ocean's depths, out of reach for albatross and other feathered predators. Yet squid form the mainstay of the albatross diet. Scientists believe that albatross grab the floating remains of short-lived squid off the water's surface. A multitude of fish species living in these waters helps feed the seals and birds. In the summer, the ocean, brimming with food, attracts a blanket of predators hunting to feed their young.
The subantarctic islands are capricious havens. Deceptive reefs lie just in front of the beaches, and the weather can be brutal. Midsummer, it takes a turn for the worse, making beach landings hazardous. Penguins leave the water looking like drunken sailors. After fishing in stormy seas, it can take time to regain balance on land. been stunned by a wave and is floundering in the shallows. It's just the opportunity the giant petrels have been waiting for. Each bird has a go at the stranded penguin. The petrels take turns according to rank. In the species pecking order, the skewers follow the petrels while the seagulls wait for their turn. Finally, the lesser sheath builds get to polish off the leftovers. When in trouble, penguins don't tend to come to each other's rescue. Sometimes, though, nature bends the rules. Night is falling. And this king penguin's destiny seems sealed. But surprisingly, a group forms to save one of its own kind. Circling around their companion to protect it, the penguins gently encourage it to stand. They watch over the injured bird for hours.
but at dawn, there's no trace of the prone penguin or his protectors. Over in their cove, fur seals follow the safety in numbers rule of self-preservation. A giant petrel hangs out, alert for an opportunity. Occasionally, a pup gets in a deadly tangle in seaweed. This time, the fur seal has protectors nearby. An alert signals its comrades to rally to the rescue. Petrels have snatched a stillborn pup abandoned on the rocks. Ten birds gather to take turns devouring the flesh. But some fur seals unite to drive away the marauding petrels. Only a few weeks are left of the Antarctic summer. Penguins keep working hard to fatten up their young for the coming winter at sea. The penguins' activity has attracted the attention of another island visitor. Killer whales also summer here because the eating is so good. Penguin, seal, fish, squid, it's all on the menu. These little offshore reefs make a good penguin hunting blind. The killer simply waits in the shadows for the birds to swim by. The whales choreograph their hunt, communicating by a series of clicking sounds. Birds sense danger. Three other members of the killer whale's pod join the scout. Time for a coordinated ambush. The penguins are panic stricken.
With a hunting strategy perfectly adapted to penguin summer fishing habits, the whales blockade the beach, cutting off fishing parents' access to their hungry chicks on shore. The penguins are stuck with an instinctive dilemma, fear of the whales versus the drive to bring fish back to their young. The chicks must eat regularly to survive the cold. Even in the midday sunshine, it never gets warmer than 18 degrees Celsius. This mother has nothing more to feed her chick. She must wait for her mate to return from the water and the killer whales. These whales risk surprisingly shallow water when hunting. Some pursue prey right onto the beach and then manage to wriggle back off the sand. Miraculously, two penguins run the blockade and survive. A whole group returns with no losses. Meanwhile, the whales have identified more vulnerable quarry atop this offshore reef. Tired, perhaps, these birds took the wrong route. Now they're trapped and under siege. The whale strategy pays off. The terrified birds dive into the water, where one at least will fall into waiting jaws. Strangely, the whales seem to hold back from eating their wounded prey. This remarkable restraint turns out to be a hunting and eating lesson for a young killer whale. 
The mother approaches to help her youngster, who is unaccustomed to eating fresh flesh. She holds the penguin in her mouth, so the young whale can bite it more easily. As the summer draws to an end, life on the beach has relaxed a little. Peace reigns momentarily among the island's summer visitors. sea elephant seems quite happy playing on his own with a piece of seaweed. Until a bigger pup comes along to spoil his fun. There are plenty of other toys on the beach. Flurries of feathers presage the coming cold. At the end of summer, the penguins molt. Their feathers fall out in clumps, covering the beach with a downy blanket. Before heading for their winter home on the open ocean, they'll grow new plumage, replacing their old summer feathers. Now the snow is really falling. The summer beach party is over, with all but some frustrated young bull elephant seals finding mates. The time has come for these creatures to depart and head back to the ocean, where they'll find space and freedom once more. <laughs> 